Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Suratori. And I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Suratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And today we're talking about past lives. Uh, this is the first episode for 2023. So it's very appropriate that we talk about the past while we move forward. <laughs> All right. So, Bonnie, um, well, first off, how are you? It's, it's the new year. Yes, it's a new year, new beginnings. And, you know, we got an opportunity to put the past behind us, which I think everyone needs to do and keep moving forward. So, yeah, welcoming the new year and looking forward to having a great time sharing and expanding in consciousness and helping to end suffering. Yes, yes. So hopefully this episode will uh, sh shed a lot of light on things that are going on yeah. with our lives. Uh, this is a very important episode, I feel. And it might be something where we could do several episodes on because there's so many questions on it. And maybe yeah, we could talk yeah. about that later. And that'll be great. Okay, so my first question is, do past lives affect our current life? And how much of an effect do they have? <laughs> Sorry. Any more part of that question? No, that, that's the <laughs> okay. question. All right. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. Our current life is completely affected by our past lives. Okay. So think about this, whatever trauma we've had that we have, that we're still holding on to is still coming forth into our soul imprint. And we're still trying to unravel that. So think about this. Nothing began in this lifetime. All of your issues, your traumas, your wounding, your feelings of being forsaken, your feelings of not being loved, your feelings like you're not enough, your feelings of being victimized, tortured, all everything you are experiencing, you have been experiencing for lifetimes. Okay. So I think it's important that people understand how does that work? Okay, so let's just say, let's go back, back, back. I'm going to use Cynthia, okay? So Cynthia, I'm just going to use you as a, okay. <laughs> as kind of like the demo, so to speak, as, as a means of tracking. So, and so when you look at your own life and, and what you're still experiencing right now, or even looking at your life in the past, and, you know, what, what are some of the biggest pieces? What have you been trying to unravel? What have you been trying to liberate yourself from? What are some of those emotions, those, those reactions, you know, that grab and angst that you experience, the anxiety in your body, the, you know, all the frequencies that we experience. When you look at that, there's a lot, right? I mean, it isn't just one thing. It's like many, many, many. I mean, we're all seeking to be liberated. We're all trying to be free from our suffering. Everybody is. Everyone wants to be happy. Okay. So, if we understand what's really happening, then we have the power to make changes. If we don't, we're just victims to our lives, all right? So if I go back in Cynthia's life and go track, track, tracking back, just to get a sense of, like I can see a lot of the, the traumas of this lifetime as I'm looking into her energy field, you know, the same kinds of issues that she's had with parents, you know, mothers and fathers, and different beliefs that get created because of, of those experiences. When I track back, What's happened is I go, I'm just being drawn back to a uh, lifetime. Hang on, is this with the father? Yeah. So there's like, when you think about your father, Cynthia, okay, just thinking about your dad, there's still angst in your body. Like when you think about him, it may not feel like total open heart or full open love. There might still be a little protection. Um, you know what I mean? Just like even thinking about him, you might feel some frequencies in your own physical body still. And I just want to, I don't need to, I don't need you to tell me what things are, but can you still feel like when you think about dad, that it isn't just this full open hearted, you know, unconditional love. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Okay. So when I go back to, you know, what happens in this lifetime, I'm going back you know, on to, on her live stream. And there's many, many lifetimes. They've been doing their dance back and forth, different, different capacity, different relationships, of their soul connection, but the dad is a pretty big player in in her soul connection. One of her soul soul partners, and when I go back, there's definitely a frequency from a particular lifetime where her body, where she was very traumatized, and 
Hang on a second. So when I look at that, this was with to be now known as her father. Was he the dad in that? Particular? Yeah. So he was the dad in that lifetime. So there's there's just energies that happened and emotions that got activated and traumas that were um, occurring in that particular lifetime. So here's what's really being asked of us people with our with our uh, wounding, so to speak. Okay. When we have an experience and it causes an emotional reaction within, the journey is know thyself in that emotion. If you don't, you anchor in the trauma of that emotion and it stays in your soul imprint and you carry it forth into the next incarnation and so on and so on and so on until you unravel that angst, okay? so. She's, uh, I'm looking at lifetimes. So this frequency of the dad has been carried through lifetimes and now here it is again, okay? So there's some trauma from that experience that still needs to be known. Meaning what I mean by that is now the next component for, for Cynthia would be to think about dad. What does that feel like? What are the emotions in there? And then to go drop into those emotions drop into the trauma with the heart wide open and allow oneself to know the experience, to know the traumas, to know the pain, the anguish, the despair, all of that, the hopelessness. And in doing so, you're knowing yourself in the trauma that you've been trying to unravel from the past. And, in, and as you're doing that, you're knowing the frequency, you're understanding it, you're experiencing yourself in your own trauma of the father issue, the core wounding that you have with your dad. And this is being asked of everyone. And it isn't just with our dad, whatever the issue is, people, whatever you're living, it did not begin in this lifetime. It began in your past lives. It's just a carryover of a pain and a, and a heartache, heartbreak of feeling unloved, feeling punished, feeling, um, in some ways rejected and judged, but it's, it's like whatever we're holding, whatever we're experiencing, I promise you, it didn't begin here, it started in the past. So the past lives are directly influencing and dictating our reality right here, right now. And at a soul level, our higher levels are constantly bringing us opportunity to unravel. We're gonna get activated. If we didn't unravel it as a child, which we aren't, aren't going to because we have no teachings, we have no ability to drop in. But as we get older and older, we continue to collect more evidence and proof because other people begin to treat us the same way that our relationship with our father made us feel, okay? So that continues until we unravel that. So again, we're being given opportunities. We see them as punishments, as, oh, something bad's being happened to me. I must be bad. I must be a sinner. I must be something wrong with me. I'm not loved, whatever, whatever. But all that's happening is our own higher levels are drawing us the opportunity to unravel it. And it feels like, oh, my God, I'm being punished. Oh, my goodness. And why is this happening to me? You know, what, what? And again, it's going to be with every single issue of your life is a carryover from past lives. And you're given an opportunity all the time to face yourself and unravel it. So that is just one component of the carryover from past lives and how we are affected by our past experiences. All right. So hopefully you understand that. Hopefully you really grasp the enormity of your, your life and what you're doing and who you really are, and that you do have the ability and power to unravel and to clear and to eventually be happy. <laughs> well, that's good news, Bonnie. So I, <laughs> several things that you mentioned, um, I want to kind of touch on a little bit more. And when you talk about how we carry over things and we have to know it completely, fully surrender to it completely in order to truly know it, and then it'll be done. And that's something that you know, I never heard about that before until I found your work and finally made sense when people talk mm -hmm. about, usually people talk about like, we come here to learn lessons, right? Soul <laughs> lessons. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, what does that really look like to learn a soul lesson? What does it really mean? And there was, I never found an explanation for that. And so mm -hmm. when I hear of like a lesson, I think of 
do I have to figure something out with my mind? I always thought it was an intellectual thing. Of course, there right, was right, there's right. a deeper part of me that knew like there's a deeper understanding about something that would create an actual shift and change. Mm -hmm. But I still didn't really have what I would call like a like an actual process or step by step type of under, way of understanding it. But then when I heard mm -hmm. you talk about knowing yourself in in uh, an emotion or in an experience so fully that you've actually like completely are it, then you truly know it and then it's done. So when people yeah. say lessons, that's what you mean, right? Is that's that's what they mean by lessons. I just want to make sure yeah. that's clear for people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, people don't really understand these these concepts. Okay, it's like <clears throat> our world has been in such a way. I mean, we're we've been looking for answers. Okay, since the since we've been in our consciousness or in human form, in the suffering that we experience by being in in this Maya in this density on planet Earth, we've all we've been looking for the answer. We've been looking for the way. Think about it. Okay, I mean, think of all the the people that came before us, seeking, seeking, looking, looking. So because people don't understand the true teachings then they have to create something that makes sense. So it's all about soul lessons, not, okay? This is not about a friggin' soul lesson. It's about your soul evolving, evolving. We've done the same thing repeatedly. How many lifetimes have you been traumatized by the being as your father in this lifetime? Holy shit, at least 106 lifetimes. What lesson are you trying to get here? It's not about a lesson, people. This is, has nothing to do with a lesson. This is a soul evolving. And the way to evolve is to know thyself as God itself. How are you going to do that? Well, you have these major experiences. You think God is, you know, is nothing but other than just, you know, the pure love and light. Well, that is actually the truth. And God doesn't have any friggin' emotions. So here's what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Lightning, thunder. Okay. So anyway, so if creation has no emotions and we have all these emotions, what are we really doing? I'll tell you what we're doing. Okay. When we get, I'm going to use you again, Cynthia, when you get all that trauma that you have lived and the belief that there's something that you're not loved, that you don't matter, you're not enough, you've been victimized. When you drop into these places of intense emotion, and you know that emotion, that emotion dissolves and lifts. It doesn't live in your body anymore. We land more fully in that frequency of pure love and light, which is creation, which is God, which is what we are all going back to in time. Eventually, that's the mission of the soul is to wake up and come back into pure love and light and to be in the pure awareness state of consciousness that is the all that is, okay? So God is not emotional. God is not judging. <laughs> that always cracks me up. And God is not in a white robe with a big old beard, okay? It simply is not true. What we're experiencing is our own higher levers. We're experiencing other frequencies of consciousness that have taken on energy frequencies. Like, for example, we look at Jesus. We look at uh, Buddha. We look at Krishna, we look at um, Sam Lewis, we look at, um, you know, Sufi masters, all of these beings, Kuan Yin, all of them. They're just spirits, they're souls still evolving. Okay. When they open up and completely know all of creation, they won't exist anymore because we go back into the oneness. Okay. So we aren't doing soul lessons here. We are evolving as a soul to wake up fully, to become the truth of who we are, to merge back into oneness. That is what we are doing ultimately. In the meantime, we're coming in, we're having these life experiences, we're having carryover from all our past lives, thinking it's still happening to us. Now. This is an editor's note by Cynthia. The audio and video of the recording cut out and Bonnie could not finish her point. So she decided to start over and answer the question of soul lessons from the beginning. Thank you. It isn't about soul lessons. It's about the soul waking up and the soul evolving. All right. When we think of creation, creation is only pure love and light. There is nothing but that. There is no, you know, man of the long robe, a big old white beard. There is no judging God, vengeful God. 
punishing God. None of that's true, okay? Creation is only pure frequency of love and light. We as souls evolving are incarnating, having experiences so we can go back to the frequency of pure love and light, all right? But then we get caught up in the trauma dramas, the hurtings, you torture me, you hurt me, you abandon me, you reject me, you judge me, you made me feel this way, you victimize me, okay? That simply isn't true, but that's what we believe and feel, all right? What's happening is we are co-creating our dance. We are co-creating all the traumas we are experiencing. We are co-creating everything to come back to the pure love and light. So as we are unraveling the traumas from our past lives, we don't know that that's what's happening. What we're believing is you're doing something to me. I, I'm being punished. There might be something wrong with me. I'm a sinner. You know, I'm broken. I'm shattered. I'm no good. I'm victimized. All that blah, blah, blah. Okay, bad, bad. Okay, what's really happening is our own higher levels are bringing us the opportunity, which feels like the trauma drama, but feels intense, so that we can go into the emotion of that pain and surrender to it completely die to that energy, know it so that nothing exists but that emotion. And then what we're doing is we are knowing all facets of creation, all faces of creation in physical form that you cannot feel when you're no longer in a physical body. But now what happens is, is we're coming back to that frequency of pure love and light. When we go through an emotion, when we go through a frequency of feeling like I've been betrayed, the feeling of betrayal, heart shattering, heartbroken, deep, deep, deep emotional pain, despair, despondency, pain. So we go through that and pretty soon, oh my goodness, I have know, I know it all the way now. I went all the way through that feeling, that feeling right there. I went through all of it and no, it doesn't exist. Whoa, I just landed more in my own pure love and light. Holy cow, this is what we're doing. So as we go through these deep places of emotion, we're unraveling the wounding and we're knowing ourselves in that wounding, that pain, so that we can come back to the truth of who we are, which is the frequency of pure love and light. When we know an emotional energy frequency, we know it. We don't have to keep doing it over and over because we have surrendered. When I say surrender, that means you drop into the feeling so fully that nothing exists but that feeling. You don't have a mind thought. You don't even know where you are. Nothing of you exists but the emotion. You're in so fully that you are knowing thyself in that. When you do that, you go through it and you come into the frequency of who you really are, which is a pure love and energy. Okay. This isn't a soul lesson. This is a soul evolving and we haven't been able to evolve because we're stuck in the old paradigm of victimization and, you know, hatred and greed and power over and separation. So now we're coming into that new paradigm. Everything's changing, but now we can do it. Now we can come back to the truth of who we are. We can land in that frequency of pure love and light, which is creation itself. So all of our lives, all of our growth, all of our experiences are for the very purpose to come back into oneness, come back into creation itself, emerge back into the frequency of pure love and light. No, no separation, no mind thoughts, nothing. That's the soul journey. That's what we're all doing. And so again, this isn't about soul lessons. This is about your soul waking up, your soul evolving and coming back to the true frequency, the true essence of who every one of us actually is. Pure love and light. Cause no harm, no jealousies, no envies, no desire to you know, torture people. Game over people. Love and light. That's the bottom line. That's it. So lessons, eh. That's the old way, the old paradigm. We had to find a way to, you know, to understand who we are. People are seeking, seeking, trying to understand, trying to wake up. People don't have the friggin' answer. They don't know how to even ask the right question. They don't know how to seek. They don't know how to like track energy. Like what, 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 you know? <laughs> so for me, that's not the that big, big, big thing. Like what, 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 where's this really coming from? What's the true answer here? Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, yes, coming back to the self. No more lesson. Get the lesson out of your head. It's the wake up call, people. We're in the wake up call. Thanks so much for uh, really going into that very passionately, Bonnie. That's probably the most lively I've seen you talk about this because 
but I'm, I'm grateful for it because the whole idea about the soul lessons, I was stuck on that for so long and, <laughs> and really, and a lot of things, you know, I did find some shifts and changes in my life before I found you and your teachings. But when I finally like found your work, that's when things really started to shift for me. And one of the main components was what you just taught about going into emotion so fully. And I realized, I think when I fa- finally heard you say that and I took it in, I realized that in the past, before I found your work, the deepest healing I ever got was shadow work with myself. I didn't work with a healer for the deepest healing I had before you. Before you. I mean, mm-hmm. I have deeper healing now with your work, but, um, but back then, I didn't, I didn't really know. I think a part of me just felt like I have to know the emotions. I have to go into them. And I went and surrendered so, so much. And that was mm-hmm. when I got the best mm-hmm. healing I ever did. And I honestly, uh, like, I thought it was a different healing technique that was healing me that, that deeply. And it wasn't, it was this process you were talking about. Yeah, and, yeah. and the component that really made a difference for me that I didn't know about is not having any mind thoughts when you're doing that. That was part that was missing when I was doing my yeah, own shadow yeah. work. And I just right. wanted to, um, <laughs> I wanted to let people know who are listening to this now that, that this, what Bonnie was talking about just now was a, a game changer for me. And um, so definitely it, it try it, <laughs> try it. it. It'll be painful, but it, it's <laughs> worth it. Uh, so yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we touched upon a lot already. And, um, you know, this is kind of a long, I have so many questions, but I do want to at least get to maybe one more and then we can maybe mm-hmm. have part two for the for right. This. Right. I think we might need part two. Yeah. So Bonnie, if I work on healing a trauma that I have in this lifetime, let's say I have a memory of this isn't true, but let's say I had a memory of I was five years old. I had a traumatic experience and of course, this is tied to past life traumas because all of them are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know about my past life traumas. I just know about this one instance right. when I was five. Right. Could I right. go into that with maybe different types of healing modalities, maybe hypnosis or whatever kind of thing that people <laughs> work with and actually heal uh, the past life issue if I heal the current life issue? Does right. that make sense? Right, like, right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yes, yes. Okay, so again, think about this. I'm going to use you. Trauma with dad, okay? Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. What is it, like 103, 106, something like that lifetime, okay? So here you come, pretend like you know nothing. You're just in a body and you're trying to end your suffering. You're totally asleep, but you go see therapists and healers. And and yes, someone finally teaches you how to go in and feel these deep emotional places, okay? There are modalities, gestalt therapy, help people to come in. There was a mahalatropy breath work. There's the modalities really do help people to come in and true, feel their true feelings, okay? There's a lot of them. And what happens though is when we go in fully, like let's just say here's that, that person and they, they dropped into that trauma when they were five and they completely surrender, completely, okay? No mind thoughts, don't even lost completely. All they are is that emotion and that trauma. Here's what happens. Past life memories come through. Little flashes of lifetimes come through. Memories come through. Um, oftentimes, the, the actual trauma that, it, that happened in this lifetime that we maybe didn't remember, those memories start to come through, okay? Because we're releasing the intensity that we've been holding down. Okay, so here's the emotion we've been holding down. Now we're opening to it, saying yes to it. So that emotion is coming up. And in that emotion is all the baggage, all the past lives, all the traumas that we've ever experienced. Okay, if we surrender fully enough all the way, ride the waves, because there'll be waves of emotion that come through. But what happens is, is when that surrender, we are now knowing ourselves fully in that particular emotion. We have surrendered all the way, no resistance, heart wide open, feeling the love of our own selves, feeling the love that we experience for all existence, while at the same time experiencing the extreme trauma, the pain of that particular issue that that child at five years old anchored into their subconscious on top of the the other energies. And now for the first time, fully opening, fully surrendering, knowing thyself all the way in this deep, profound emotion and other emotions will come, understanding will come, thoughts and, and desires and 
one in your mom, one in your dad, all the all the emotions that are connected just to this trauma of this lifetime, all are presenting so all together, okay? But what's happening is you are healing the core wound that began way back there in your life stream. You don't have to remember what that was. You don't have to know what that was. You don't have to believe it, okay? The bottom line is this, fully surrender to an emotion that you are experiencing right now, and you will be clearing out all of that past carry over from your lifetimes. It will be cleaned up and clear because know thyself. You are knowing yourself in the trauma, in the hurt, in the heartache, in the heartbreak, whatever, whatever those are, you are now knowing yourself in those ways. What happens is heart opens. You're no longer afraid of that emotion because now you know it. You no longer have to recreate that over and over because now you know it doesn't mean that other things won't be happening. Whatever the next piece is, it's going to be coming right up. Okay. You can, you can bank on that one. <laughs> That's the acceleration. So we are, we are in the crucible right now. We are being thrown into crisis. We are being forced to face ourselves. I'm just going to say, you might as well do it because if you don't, it's not going to go away. You'll die carrying into your next incarnation. You're going to be incarnating it until you face it. So the sooner you get through it, the better. Move on to the next piece and just keep your heart open. And I promise, it's like things, life shifts and changes. Bottom line is this, we want to be happy. We want to share the gift of who we are, which is pure love and light. We want to be able to just sing our own song, dance our own dance, be authentically ourselves while having the heart open, knowing we are all connected. We're all part of the creation of the all that is. And we're all in this together on the solo journey. <laughs> oh, that one. So Bonnie, I know you're talking about this whole process of uh, dropping in and surrendering and releasing your emotions, but I know that your work spiritual acceleration is like a shortcut, right? It's uh, <laughs> so, it really is. Yeah. Oh my gosh, when I found yeah. your work, it was like hallelujah kind of yeah, yeah. experience. And so people could have really, really deep clearings from your work where it kind of bypasses that need to drop in that fully. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm, I'm not telling people they shouldn't do that, but you, mm -hmm, your work mm -hmm. is so profound and so deep that yeah, it, yeah, it's kind yeah. of about you. People could kind of bypass that, right? Could you tell a little more about people who yeah, are maybe yeah. the first time hearing you? Sure. Yeah. So it is actually true. Um, the f clearing out emo emotional energy is not the absolute. It's not who we are. All right. When you understand that concept, when you really get it, whoa, all right, all this pain, all this anguish, all this heartache, heartbreak, all these feelings and emotions, they're emotional frequencies, they're not the absolute. What is absolute is your frequency of pure love and light. But on top of that love and light is all your wounding, okay? So we can spin out, we can clear out, we can release trauma, shock, crisis. We can clear out and release your, your despair, your despondency, your hatred, your loathing your, your uh, feelings of sadness, deep, deep sadness, profound sadness, all these emotions can be spin, spun out. Now, there still may be something that at a soul level you need to know yourself in. So even though we spin everything out, there may still be some kind of an emotional frequency that you will have to go in and feel. The good news is, is you're not clearing other discarnates emotions. You're not having to clear you know, hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes of emotions anchored in. It's just that pure core one wound, so to speak, that now you're going to go in and feel fully and be done. So there are times, it just depends on the intensity. It depends on where the soul is in its evolution. It also depends on what does the soul needs still to understand and face and know itself in. But most of these energies can be cleared out. So they're not in the body at all. So the same thing of going through your yourself, going in these deep emotional places and do complete surrender can, can actually be spun out of your body so it doesn't exist. And there is still something about the soul needing to know itself in certain experiences. So there's plenty, plenty of experiences, you know what I mean, that will cause one to feel heartache or heartbreak or to feel dejected or rejected or abandoned or betrayed, okay? are feeling unloved and not enough. So we're clearing out all the debris so that, whoa, there's, oh, there's that core wound right there. All right, drop in, feel it. Oh, got it. 
surrendered completely, 100%. Know yourself all the way in that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God. All righty. Heart open, love and light. You're living your true purpose. There is a upcoming live group clearing on January 27th. That is for past lives. It's called Clearing Past Life Trauma for the New Year. So yeah, the yeah, link will yeah. be in the description below. Uh, also, Bonnie, really, really quick. I know we are running out of time here, but <clears throat> you do teach your modality. Um, then there is a program coming up and if people, if they want to learn how to um, heal past lives the way that you do and much more. It should, mm -hmm. Bonnie does so much mm -hmm. more. If you want to learn mm -hmm. that, um, I think you have a program foundations that's coming up. Could you talk a little yes, bit about that? Yes, the foundations. Yes. Foundation does have all the different components. It's got the past life. It's got the galactic interdimensional. It's got the emotional component. It has our, um, uh, in the dark force stuff. So there, there's like, there's six segments and all of them are profoundly, uh, a part of the foundations and the work that I do. So everything that I do will be taught in foundation, or at least the the, you know, you'll be learning the, the energies, how to track it, how to unravel it. You'll get all kinds of information that you won't get anywhere else because nobody else has these teachings. All right. And so these teachings are profound. They're the absolute. They are true and real. And when you have these teachings, it's a game changer. It changes your life and you will be an amazingly skilled healer that will take your work to the next level big time, okay? Because if you can do things nobody else can, you become quite well known, all right? So people will be looking for you. So yeah, the foundations is, is that, it's the foundation of the work. And after that, we do have the apprenticeship where you get to hang with me and we keep on going. All right, thank you so much, Bonnie, for this awesome conversation about past lives. And uh, I know that once again, I just have to say you've definitely changed my life and I'm just so grateful because seriously, <laughs> I, it, everything that you do is just incredible and um, I healed so much since I found you. So thank you once again, everybody, all the links that everybody, everything we talked about today is going to be in the description and the show notes. Um, do check us out on spiritualacceleration.com. If you're on YouTube watching this, like the video, subscribe. Uh, check out the free gifts on spiritualacceleration.com as well as all the other programs and offerings and services. All right. Thank you again, Bonnie. And thank you, everybody.